it's finally starting to look like our summer garden out here, but it's taken a long time for it to get this far. Because of bad weather, our summer garden got off to the slowest start that we've ever seen. Today I thought I'd give you an update on how our garden is doing after a cold and rainy spring. Farmers here in the Midwest were hit hard by the bad weather this spring. We had colder than average temperatures in May and June, and we had a lot of rain. As a result, they weren't able to get their crops into the ground on time, and even after planting, the crops didn't do well because of continued cold and rain. We had a similar experience with our summer crops. We had to delay planting out things like tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants, and then when we did plant them out, they struggled. We didn't plant out tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants until late May, which is a couple weeks later than usual. And after planting, we continued to get a lot of rain and low temperatures in the 50s through most of June, which isn't great for these crops. And as a result, they're all well behind schedule. Last year, we started harvesting our tomatoes in early July, but this year, they're much further behind and we probably won't harvest any until late July or even early August. And we've also seen more blight early in the season on our plants. The same is true for other summer crops like cucumbers. They're well behind schedule and they have more disease issues. Our squash plants are also lagging, but fortunately they haven't had any disease or pest issues so far. Now just because our summer crops have gotten off to a slow start doesn't mean we haven't had a lot to harvest from the garden. One of the strategies we follow to make sure that we have something to harvest every month of the year is that we grow a wide variety of crops, including those like the ones in this bed right here that don't mind a little cool weather. It was an exceptional year for sugar snap peas, which we harvested through June and into early July. These Oregon sugar pod peas grew well above their eight foot trellis. I'm pretty tall, but I could barely reach them. We also had lots of Tokyo market turnips to harvest in May and June. This variety is sweeter and faster growing than most turnips. We especially enjoy these in one of our favorite Indian dishes. We also harvested new potatoes as needed for meals in June and July. And once these plants die back completely, we'll harvest all of the potatoes. The last cool weather crops I'll mention are lettuce and carrots. We planted so much lettuce in late winter that we had enough to harvest almost every day through spring. Now that it's getting warmer, we're still harvesting muir lettuce, which is a variety that is slow to bolt in warm weather. And the carrots we planted under cover in late winter were slow to mature, but we started harvesting them in June. And we have lots of them. We grow small carrot varieties like these because they do best in our shaded garden. So those are some of the cool weather crops we've been harvesting in May, June, and July. But there's actually one summer crop that we started harvesting earlier this year than ever before, thanks to the hoop house. In early April, we planted bush beans in seven gallon grow bags in the hoop house. When it got warm enough, we moved the grow bags to our front steps where it's very sunny. This gave us bush beans in mid-June, despite the bad weather. I'm pretty sure that's the earliest we've ever harvested beans. Another plant we started early in the hoop house that is doing very well is this sugar pie pumpkin. This is a great way to use the hoop house to grow vertically in summer. It's mostly shaded at ground level, but up this high the pumpkin will get plenty of sun. And the sweet potatoes we started in the hoop house in April are much farther along than those we started in the front yard after our last frost. We've even kept the cold frame partially covered this summer to keep them nice and warm. Before closing, I thought I'd talk about our perennials. We have some good news and bad news there. The bad news is that our fruit trees aren't doing well at all. It doesn't look like we'll get any peaches this year. Last year we had a wonderful crop, so we're going to really miss having fresh peaches this summer. And so far there's only one pear on our Asian pear tree, so it looks like we won't have much of a pear harvest either. But the good news is that the rest of our perennials are all doing fine. We had a good asparagus harvest this year, and we had more strawberries than we could eat. And we're really excited about our blueberries. It looks like we're going to have our best harvest ever. And all of our other perennials, including blackberries and raspberries, are doing very well, though a little behind schedule. We're already harvesting raspberries, and blackberries will be ready soon. 
Hey, little buddy. I hope to be back soon with a July harvest video. I know it's almost time to harvest potatoes and garlic. I haven't been making as many videos lately because I've been very busy, but I do hope to get back to a more regular schedule soon. Please let me know in a comment below how your garden is coming along. And if you're from the Midwest, let me know if you're seeing some of the same issues that we're seeing in our garden this year. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more videos on how to grow a lot of food on a little land without spending much or working harder than you have to. Let's go inside, buddy.